Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we're going to be looking at line plot graphs in a little activity entitled Pencil Links. We are in our home links, Unit 7, Lesson 13, and no, your eyes do not deceive you. This home links activity actually has two pages involved. So let's buckle in and get right to it. On the first page, it gives us the setup of the story problems. At the beginning of the year, Mrs. Carey gave each student in her class a new pencil with Welcome to Fourth Grade written on it. A month later, the class measured their pencils to the nearest eighth of an inch. So right here in this table, this is all the data that was collected, and we would have to display it along this number line right here. Now then, there are about 15, 16 hash marks along this number line, and if we were to start at zero on the left-hand side and mark every eighth of an inch, we would probably run out of number line before we hit the longest uh, length of pencil measured in this uh, data set. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at which amount, which measurement was the smallest, and that's where we should start with our number line. So a quick scan of all this data, and I see that 1 and 7 eighths is our smallest amount. So on this number line right here, in the far left, I would write 1 and 7 eighths. Now what comes after 1 and 7 eighths? Well, one way to think about it is 1 and 8 eighths. And if you have 8 eighths of an inch, that's the same as one whole. And so one and one would give me two. Two inches, and then I would continue with two and an eighth. Two and two eighths, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now once I fill out that number line, I'm going to start plotting out all of the times that I see a certain measurement. Okay, so for example... I have 1 and 7 eighths as one of my measurements, so I would put an X right here. I also see that there is a 2 right there, so I would put an X over the 2. And every time I come across 1 7 eighths or 2 or 2 and an eighth or any other measurement along this number line, I would put an X above that number corresponding with the number line. Okay? Now, it's going to take a hot minute for me to fill in this line plot and put all the X's in. So let's just take a moment to do a little digital editing. And, and boom! I have a completed line plot graph with my number line, uh, all complete with numbers along the bottom. The only thing that's missing from this line plot graph is a title at the top, which tells me what these X's represent, and then uh, the unit of measure down at the bottom. So at the top, I'll write something like pencil lengths. To the nearest eighth of an inch. I can put that quotation mark symbol to represent inches. And then down here, I'm going to tell you that these numbers represent length in inches. Okay, so now that we have all the data we need, or the data has been sorted in a way that we can easily access, we now need to look at the questions on the following page. It says use the completed line plot to answer these questions. For example, number one says how many students have a pencil that is shorter than two and seven eighths inches? Okay, two and seven eighths inches. So that would mean anywhere on this number line to the left of this area here I would count all those X's and add them all up. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep. There are 13 X's. So that means 13 students had a pencil that was less than or shorter than 2 and 7 eighths inches. Okay. Problem number two asks us what's the most common pencil length. And again, I'm going to consult my uh, 
line plot graph, and I'm going to look for the uh, column that is the tallest or has the most x's. And as you can see, it's 5 x's that's under 2 and 7 eighths. Okay, so here, instead of writing students, I would write a length, which is 2 and 7 eighths. And that's really all there is to this assignment. The bulk of the work is creating the line plot graph and sorting the information you received to make sense of that information. That's what graphs do. They help us visualize and easily access uh, figures and facts about a topic that otherwise would be very dreary to have to sort through if this is all that we had to look at. Okay, so visually representing data. Okay, so I'm going to let you answer the rest of these questions about pencil lengths. Now down at the bottom of the second page we have some fraction computation, addition and subtraction. So let's try one, shall we? I'm going to do problem number, uh, let's do problem number 9, shall we? 7 and 41 hundredths minus 3 and 51 one hundredths. Well, it's a subtraction problem, so I should probably organize this a little differently. Maybe I should rewrite this vertically. 7 and 41 hundredths minus 3 and 51 hundredths. Now the reason why I wrote this vertically, otherwise known as up and down, is to point out that there are different place values, okay? And when I can see the place values in vertical columns according to their place values, that can sometimes cue me as to whether or not I need to regroup. And as you can see, I want to subtract 51 hundredths from 41 hundredths. And I can't really do that. I can't subtract more than what I have without borrowing from the next column right here. So I'm going to turn this into six holes. And I'm going to turn one, uh, 41 hundredths into 141 hundredths because one hole broken up into a hundredths would give you 100 hundredths. Okay? Is this looking kind of familiar? Well, hopefully it should because a fraction of a hundred is the way that we split a dollar into cents. So another way we could represent this problem is something like this. Seven dollars and forty-one cents minus three dollars and fifty-one cents. I go into a store with seven dollars and forty-one cents in my pocket and I want to buy something that costs three dollars and fifty-one cents. How much money am I going to have left over? Well, I can subtract one hundredth minus one hundredth, so it's going to leave me with zero. But I can't take f five dimes from four dimes, so again, i got to borrow a dollar, making this six dollars, and I'm going to turn four dimes, or four tenths, into fourteen tenths. Fourteen minus five is now nine, and then six minus three is three which leaves me a total of $3.90 as my difference. So that's all I'm doing here, but I'm just doing it with fractions instead of decimals. 141 minus 51, well, that's going to leave me with 90, because 1 minus 1 is 0, 14 minus 5 is 9. 90 what? 90 hundredths. And then 6 minus 3 is 3. So my total, my difference is 3 and 90 a hundredths. But either one of those ways, fractions or decimals, would be acceptable. I'll let you in on a little secret. Decimals are just a, another way to represent fractional amounts, and they get really handy to use because we're so well trained in regrouping when we add, subtract, and so forth, and especially when we want to multiply amounts that have a fractional part to them. Converting a fraction to a decimal just makes it easier, okay? Something to be thinking about for the future, hint, hint. Well, there we are. Two pages of home links. Oh, that wasn't that terrible, was it? Okay, just like anything, we, we take on a big project and we uh, knock it out one step at a time, okay? 
If along the way you tripped up over one of these steps, well, you need to talk to your math teacher about it. Ask them questions. Ask for their help. They're happy to help you if they know you have a problem. Okay? I hope that this video was helpful in some way. And until we meet again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.